Is it important for you to be able to understand yourself? To be able to enjoy the moment? To express your own ideas? Or maybe even to be able to share what your dreams are? I learned a little bit about those things during a year I spent in a monastery. It was not exactly a year and it was not exactly a monastery, <laughs> but we will come back to it. Before, I'd like to take you to year 2009. In the spring, I was just finishing my university. And it was a great time. I had a lot of fun in a student organization when we organized party for foreign students. So we were drinking every Tuesday night and most of the other nights during the week. I was, after almost being kicked out of school three years before, I was finishing my school with the best grades and I was visiting one assessment center after the other, reaching top scores. The only problem was that there were more rounds to most of the interview processes and the door, because it was 2009, just after the financial crisis started, for me, most of the doors remained closed. Because the big companies I wanted to work for that the year before were taking 10 people in, this year they were taking just one or two. And that person was not me. I actually got one job offer in Procter & Gamble to be a specialist for packaging, so I could have been thinking about what is the most effective way how to create the Christmas package so it doesn't fall off the shelf in Tesco. And I decided I don't want to do that. So luckily, at one point, I saw a light at the end of the tunnel. And it was one of the banks where they told me that, mm, look, is very nice, but for our bank, you were just too confident, so we cannot accept you. They actually told, you, told me a couple of weeks after, but look, should we have this program, this international program, maybe you'd be good for that. And I took a look, and I had some doubts. It's a 10 months program in Italy, which sounds extremely exciting, but the drawbacks were at first. The city was very, very small. It was about 30,000 people, so no exciting parties with students. And the second thing was that I was four years in a relationship, almost about to get married. And having the idea of going away for a year with the prospect of visiting Prague for every six or eight weeks wasn't that appealing to me. But I didn't have a job. So I decided, let's go and take a look. What's at the end of the time? So I arrived in the city in Italy, and this actually was a monastery. However, it was transformed in something like a place for students, so there were no real monks. There was only Mr. Wong, who was taking care, who was taking care of the place, who was always fixing the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and being there, the couple, first couple of weeks were really exciting, because you know, you've got this group of people, it was just 27, so it was like a small family, interesting new cultures, new nationalities, but with every following week, you know, if you meet really, if you get to know one person every day, well, after one month, you're done. <laughs> and a city of 30,000 people of very, very rich Italians are, is not such an exciting place if you're a poor student from Central Europe. So in the middle of November, going to December, I was really falling into despair. And I felt terribly low. But at one point, there was this guy who came to boost our morale and to teach us something interesting. The guy from Unicredit Company sponsored a program. And he played a couple of team building games with us. That was okay. But the crucial moment was when he handed each of us a beautiful moleskin journal. And he said, you know, this experience, it's not about what is around you here. It's about what's going on in your own heads. You need to learn how to listen to yourself. And this journal might help you with that. 
So I wrote my first sentence to the moleskin, and you know, moleskin is an expensive thing. So what actually happened, it was the last sentence I ever wrote into it. Because I didn't want to spoil it, and I never came with anything smart enough to fit the pages. But what I did, being a cheap Czech guy, I just went to buy another journal that, <laughs> that cost it half the price, and it was called Companion, which is like companion, which is actually much better to have a com journal companion than to have a journal skin of the mole. And using that companion of mine, I really started learn to learn how to listen to myself. And there were there were three main points. The first I learned just to enjoy the moment. If you think about a stereotypical Japanese tourist in Prague, what's the image that comes to your head? Person running around the city with a camera, taking two pictures at every 20 centimeters of their walk. Why they are doing that? It's of course because they realize that the moment they are in at that moment, they will never be able to repeat that with their many more, 10 days of holidays a year and Prague being on the other side of the planet. So they're doing everything to keep that moment for the future. However, if you have ever had the experience of going to a foreign place, taking lots of pictures, maybe you know that after it doesn't work so well. Sometimes you don't look at the pictures at all. And when you take a look at them, a couple of years later, you say, nice building. Mm. <laughs> so what I learned, thanks to my companion, was to capture the moment in a little bit different way. And just read a small part that I wrote when I, was, when I was in Vatican, in one of the museums. It will not tell you much, but it's okay. I will explain you why I, why I wrote it this way and what it means for me. I wrote, right now, in this moment, I'm standing in front of the most impressive statue I've ever seen. A Pietà from Michelangelo. I do not need my camera anymore. And why I believe this kind of capturing a moment is way better than using the camera is if you use a tool, you are you actually disconnected from what you're doing and you're using just one sense, focus on the view. But if you write the moment down in that moment, you need to capture everything. You need to process all the sensual inputs that you have and capture them in abstract words. And this way, whenever you call back those words, this moment will stay in your mind forever, and you will be able to come back. The second thing is related to your own ideas. And I think, it, especially at the time I had it, maybe some of you had it as well, sometimes it's very difficult for us to speak about our ideas, about all our ideas, about everything that's running through our heads. Sometimes we might think it's a little bit too banal to share with all the other people. That's why the ideas stay in our heads and then they die. So the other thing that I've started doing was whatever ideas I would have running, I would just capture them, whether they were stupid or not. One of those was when I was arriving to the Bratislava main railway station and suddenly from Italy, where everybody was beautifully dressed and smiling all the time, at the railway station in Bratislava, everybody was stinking and frowning, including the lady selling the coffee. So at that time, I wrote it down. But when I spoke to her, I realized, so oh, maybe she's smiling more now. I told her she was great. She smiled even more. I wrote it down again. And then five years later, I opened that and realized, right. If you can help those people smile a little bit more, maybe they will. And I was able to take that and make it a speech and entertain a couple of people with that. <clears throat> and the last thing that I've learned was, it's about the dreams you have and that you express. Because if it's difficult, it was difficult for me to express my ideas, it was impossible 
for me to share my dreams with anyone because of course everybody would think those dreams are silly wouldn't they so what I started doing was these things I dreamt about I would capture them in the companion in the black book one of those was actually one of those things I've written down was in 2010 I wrote I really need to find a group of people well I will feel great when I will feel respected and where I'll be able to work on my career well I came to this group three years after that I'd like to leave you with this the world around is an amazing place and all the people that are sitting here are great and you can share a lot of experience with them but there is nobody there is nobody who been through everything that you were through and therefore there is nobody who can ever fully understand you so if you like to take a couple of steps forward take a pen and a paper and listen to yourselves Mr. Thank you.